So moving on from there, we want to see how he's, he's, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna move on. And he says, precision is not a reciprocal process. It's frequently the case that, and we just saw, A cannot be presented, it, while A cannot be presented from B, B can be presented from A, right? And in this so section five, he's laying out his method and how his method is going to lead us to the answer that he's looking for, right? So he says the claim here, um, I'll read what he says, hence the impressions or more immediate conceptions cannot be definitely conceived or attended to, to the neglect of an elementary conception which reduces them to unity. On the other hand, when such a conception has been obtained, there is in general no reason why the premises which have occasion it should not be neglected and therefore the explaining conception may frequently be prescinded from the more immediate ones and from the impressions. Okay, and So this is sort of the general statement of what we just went through in the example of space and color. Right? So what he's saying is that the impressions cannot be definitely conceived or attended to to the neglect of an elementary conception which reduces them to unity, which is to say that the impression of um, color cannot be attended to to the neglect of this elementary conception of space which reduces color to unity, right? So that's the general expression of what we just saw with space and color. On the other hand, he says, when you've got this conception, when you've obtained this conception of space, there's no reason why the premises that have occasioned it should, be, uh, should not be neglected. So once you have space, then you can ignore color for a while, right? And so that explaining conception can be prescinded from the more immediate ones, right? So you can, you can prescind space from color because it's a more elementary conception. And once you've got that conception, you know, once you've looked at color and you realize, oh, I can bring color to unity with space, then you can forget about color for a while if you wanted to, right? I mean, you don't have to, but it's saying that there's the possibility of doing that whereas there's no, th not the possibility the other way, right? Um, he has this reasoning, he says, now if a conception does not reduce the impressions upon which it follows to unity, it is a mere arbitrary addition to these latter, and elementary conceptions do not rise thus arbitrarily. And this was, this, was th this example of when I gave you red as another conception, it doesn't do, it doesn't d do that reduction to unity. But if the impressions could be definitely comprehended without the conception, this letter would not reduce them to unity. This, this was the, the, the example of size, which is another conception, but um, the impressions could be comprehended without that conception. So again, size doesn't reduce color to unity either. Right? So this is, I'm just sort of explaining how what we just went through with, with space, color, red, size is basically just a, a, an example of what he's laying out as a set of general principles here. Right? And, uh, and I just wanted to then point out the warrant. Elementary conceptions, he says, this is at the very top, only arise upon the occasion of experience. That is, they are produced for the first time according to a general law, the condition of which is the existence of certain impressions. And this is kind of his method, right? He's saying that these, we can, we c he's saying that the elementary conceptions arise when we experience something. That, that he's going to look at our experience of things in order to find his evidence. And he says our experience of things only can happen <coughs> through the mediation of elementary conceptions. We can't have experience of things without these elementary conceptions. And therefore, if we look at our experience of things and we analyze this experience, we can come up with the elementary conceptions without which this experience could not constitute itself as such. Right? And he says that these conceptions are produced according to a general law. There's a general law that we can deduce by looking at the way that our experience works. Right? So this is, this is again, I guess you could say his methodology, I mean, he, but it's, 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 um, it's explaining his methodology in a more general sense. We we first, we talked about his methodology as looking at sentences, right? But <coughs> in, in fact, looking at sentences is his way of looking at the way we experience things. That how, how we experience the world is, uh, is sort of something that we can find out by looking at the, the, the sentences that we use to reflect that experience. 
right? So 